Hi, I'm Maria Guadagno from TheBombshellBlueprint.com, and today I have a very exciting guest with us, Julie Morris, the amazing chef and author of Superfood Kitchen, which just happens to be one of my favorite cookbooks, because not only is everything in here delicious, it's also amazingly healthy for you as well. And the book itself is just gorgeous, the photography is mouth-watering, definitely go pick this up. And she also recently released Superfood Smoothies, again, full of recipes, inventive recipes that are all good for you. Some of these smoothies taste like liquid dessert, but again, they're good for you. So you can't go go wrong with that. So thank you for being here, Julie. Welcome. Thank um, you. Yeah. So, um, so I'm just going to ask you a couple questions, and I'm just curious. You wrote Superfood Kitchen, Superfood Smoothies. How did you come to um, come to be the sort of superfood expert? Well, it was something that I came across accidentally about 10 years ago. I was in college, and I started to develop all of the symptoms of chronic fatigue syndrome. Basically, as a vegetarian before then, I was always really into food, but I started to get really tired, chronic allergies, uh, wasn't recovering very well from exercise, and so I turned to the thing that I loved most, which is food, to try and see if there was something that I could include in my life that would give me more energy. And so I found these weird things called superfoods, and I ordered a couple of superfoods online off of a really sketchy website and got goji berries and maca <laughs> powder and didn't really know what to do with them. But basically, I gave them the chance. I was like, you know, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to start incorporating these into my life. I'm going to cut coffee out and include superfoods instead and see what happens. And... Once I did that, after just a couple of weeks, I felt dramatically different. I mean, it was it was night and day. I had more energy. I felt really balanced. I was sleeping better. I was running better. Everything was just a little bit better. And it was the first time in my life that I realized that food has a direct impact on how we feel, which shouldn't be that big of a revelation, but it was. And so at that point in time, I started getting into creating superfood recipes because there really weren't too many out there. And so I started just making my own, having always loved food. And a few years back, I became the executive chef at Novitas Naturals, which is a superfood company. Started working with all of these different superfoods like pomegranate and goji berries and maki berries and hemp. And the more I learned and the more I played with these foods in the kitchen, the more excited I became. And basically what I discovered is that most people, they do want to feel better. They do want to make these, these important changes in their life. They just want to know an easy way to do it. They just want to know the how. And so that's really where I felt like my role is, is showing people, sharing with people the how in a very delicious format. Well, we're so glad that you did because it's so true. There's really not a lot of superfood recipes out there. So it's nice to kind of have them in all in one place and know how to use these superfoods. Awesome. So what, um, you know, what inspired you to write Superfood Smoothies? I know Superfood Kitchen has everything from, yeah. you know, entrees to dessert, but why just smoothies? Smoothies are wonderful. And, and the reason why I wanted to do a, a book just on smoothies is because smoothies are one of the easiest, most undeniably delicious ways to incorporate more nutrition in your lifestyle. Doesn't matter how busy you are, doesn't matter what your favorite flavor in the entire world is, doesn't matter. Smoothies take less than five minutes to make. You can make them in any flavor of the entire world. You can make them in all different varieties, which I do in superfood smoothies. So there's everything from green smoothies to fruit smoothies to kind of rich and creamy smoothies to uh, stealth smoothies that hide different vegetables that we may not want to eat as much of, like cauliflower, for example. Um, you can make, you can basically put anything into a smoothie and make it taste really good simply with the right uh, recipe architecture. And so when I look at a blender, I see this beautiful opportunity to incorporate tons of nutrition, really jam pack like your daily insurance of nutrition into one really delicious beverage. And so just having, having the ease, having the accessibility, and having the versatility are all things that I think that a lot of us are looking for in our daily lives. Definitely. So speaking of superfoods, how, how do you define a superfood and what are some of your favorites? I define a superfood, and there's no official definition, but superfoods in general 
are the most nutrient-dense, benefit-rich foods found in nature. So really key to that definition is this idea of nutrient density because that essentially describes the ratio of micronutrients per calorie of food. So we're getting the most vitamins, minerals, antioxidants, phytochemicals, all these things that we need in very small quantities, but most of us are lacking in our day-to-day -day lives. We're getting the most amount of these benefits for every calorie that we eat. So that's what makes superfoods so beneficial, is because it's getting the most bang for every single nutritional buck, so to speak, that we're spending. And I think that's part of the reason why a lot of people are, are finding that superfoods are kind of like a fast track way to achieving better health, you know? Mm -hmm. Definitely. And that's interesting what you point out. Sometimes people are hesitant a little bit to buy superfoods because they do seem a little bit more pricey. Yeah. But you only need to use a tiny little bit in it so it will last you for a while and then your price per smoothie or whatever is actually it goes well. it goes way down and the other thing that that I, I think that's a great point and that I want to add to that is that when we're buying superfoods what we're really buying is nutrients and I think it's really important and I certainly have to go through this transition myself changing the way that I'm looking at the food that I'm buying yes Absolutely. You can buy an entire pizza for $15. However, what is that pizza actually giving you? Not very much when it comes to micronutrients. Maybe a couple minerals in there. Maybe a vitamin. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> From like the tomato sauce or something. Not much. <laughs> But when you look at something like superfoods, they're giving you a wealth of nutrition in a very, very small amount. There's a great comparison uh, out there that I like to use for, for um, camu berries because camu berries are like, they seem like this extraneous ingredient because they don't really taste very good. You get them in a powder form. You just kind of pinch it and, and put it into certain things and it's, it's not very, oops, sorry. It's, uh, it's not very much at all that you need. But the thing about camu berries, they're one of the highest sources of vitamin C. So in order to get, in order to get um, the nutrition, vitamin C-wise, of one teaspoon of camu berry, you would have to eat eight and a half oranges. Oh, my gosh. So that's what I'm saying. The cost, eight and a half oranges, one teaspoon of camu berry, like, like the cost is really justified when you're eating very nutrient-dense foods. Definitely. Now, is there a superfood that's already hiding in our kitchen? Definitely. Um, you know, I think that there's, first of all, a lot of everyday superfoods. So if you're eating fresh foods already, you're getting a lot of superfood-rich uh, uh, things into your diet. So things like berries, like strawberries, blackberries, blueberries, things like leafy greens. If you're eating any sort of salad or, or steamed vegetables, spinach, yeah. roll this, all of these things are superfoods. And then another thing that I like to add in there as well is that things like spices are mm -hmm. often a, a very forgotten superfood. Spices are incredibly medicinal, from cinnamon to cayenne pepper to cloves. Every single spice and every single herb out there has a broad range of medicinal benefits. And so, you know, just think spice is nice. Like put, put, put more into your recipes and you are going to be getting all of these incredible benefits. I love that. Yeah, and spices are so easy to just quickly add flavor to anything. Like you just put a few things on and just simple vegetables taste amazing. Absolutely. You're going to get anti-inflammatory benefits. You're going to help uh, enhance your immune system. It can even enhance weight loss or skin health. I mean, there's tons of different benefits each uh, being separate and attributed to different spices that are out there. So just use a broad diversity of them, and you're really going to gain a lot of benefits. Right. Okay, so speaking of which, since you're probably one of the healthiest people there is, what are the five foods that you all, or foods or spices that you always keep in your kitchen that are always, you know, just always on hand? Well, one would definitely be leafy greens, for sure, always, every single day, whether they're going into a smoothie or going into a salad, always leafy greens. I love kale. A lot of people do. It's delicious. Um, another one would be uh, uh, avocado, because avocado is a beautiful, healthy fat. But I should say, right, you know, there's so many different types of healthy fat. It's like go with coconut. For me, it's all about the avocados. I live in California, so they're amazing here. Um, another one is hemp. Any sort of hemp, whether it's hemp protein powder or hemp seeds. Hemp is a great source of plant-based protein. It's an anti-inflammatory source of protein. And if you're using the hemp seeds, you're also getting a lot of healthy fats as well. Love using hemp. Um, another one would be chia seeds 
because they're easy to add into almost anything at all. They contain antioxidants, they contain protein, they contain a ton of minerals in them, and they're so versatile that you can add them to absolutely anything. And then the last one would be, and this is because I have a total sweet tooth, is chocolate. I love chocolate. <laughs> especially raw chocolate, cacao, uh, because that has the most amount of antioxidants. Cacao, is, if for so long, it's been such an underappreciated health food, and I think we're starting to finally discover how healthy this food actually can be as long as there's not a lot of sugar that's added to it. So you can put cacao powder, for example, into smoothies. You can make your own chocolate. Uh, you can put it into different types of desserts. It's a very versatile food, and it's going to add in antioxidants, magnesium, iron, and tons tons of trace minerals. Right. That's a great point you bring up about the chocolate because a lot of times people think chocolate's, you know, bad for you. Yeah. It's really the sugar and the dairy and all the fillers that's that's what's bad. The pure cacao is not it's actually a superfood. Exactly. Exactly. Awesome. Okay, and what about your favorite kitchen gadget? Is there something that every kitchen should have? Totally a blender. It's got to be a blender. I mean, like if you're if you're really starting out with nothing, a good yeah. kitchen knife Absolutely, uh -huh. because it makes prep a lot better. But after you get the good kitchen knife down, definitely a blender. Because a blender allows you to recreate different types of uh, sauces and soups and smoothies, of course. Different, you can make juices in your blender. You can uh, make different types of doughs even in your blender, like, like making a, a pizza crust that's made out of beans and different types of seeds and whatnot just by getting a really good blender. It's one of the best investments you will ever make in your kitchen. And if you get a good quality one, they'll last forever and ever and ever and ever. I totally agree. I use my blender every day, sometimes twice a day. It's like, yeah. it's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> So, okay, awesome. And what about, so, I mean, do you take your blender with you when you travel? Or, like, how do you stay healthy when you're traveling? A lot of, I mean, I do know people that do that. I actually personally don't. However, I kind of have my own little weird system. Um, I bring powders with me and a shaker cup because it's just a little bit lighter, and I usually like to travel really, really light. So I'll bring my shaker cup. I'll usually bring a protein powder, like a plant-based protein powder, whether it's hemp protein or even like a flavored mix, like a blend. Mm -hmm. And then I'll add in, I'll bring some sort of greens powder just, just in case I can't get anything fresh. I'll usually bring can powder because it's something to keep me used to up. And then I'll bring maybe something like maca powder, which is a root that is a, a highly adaptogenic in terms of its properties, meaning that it helps support the immune system, helps you handle stress. Traveling can be stressful. So I just kind of pick and choose. I have a few of them and I just keep them with me. Sometimes I don't have a smoothie when I'm around, but when I'm when I'm out somewhere, it just mm -hmm. kind of depends on like what, what I'm around. But I just like having it there for the insurance reason. Right. Yeah. And that's a good idea to just bring the powders and the shaker cup. I never. It's really lighter. Like that. Yeah. Yeah. I know. I have friends that travel with like the magic bullet or the totally. nature bullet. <laughs> totally. 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 You know what? And I'm, I'm going to Europe for three weeks, and I may actually bring yeah. the bullet. <laughs> <laughs> Gotta make sure you have the right adapter, though. Right? Totally, totally, right, 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 right. <laughs> awesome. So, all right. So, okay. So, I know superfood smoothies just came out. So, but what do you have in store for us next? Are you? I know you're promoting the book, right? So, you're mm -hmm. at Williams Sonoma. What's going yep. on? Yep. So, it's at Williams Sonoma right now. It's at Barnes and Noble. It's at most uh, major. Uh, booksellers out there. But right now, actually, I'm really excited because as, as I start to wrap up some of the promotion for uh, Superfood Smoothies, I'm also working on a Superfood Juices book. And they're kind of going to be a nice little pair with one another because both smoothies and juices are wonderful additions to the diet. They both have their separate benefits. And I think for me personally, having, having both of those on almost a daily basis has really, really enhanced my health. So the, the juices book is going to be all about making the most out of out of the juice that you create. First of all, most juices out there that you buy in the market, they're like $9 on average, right? Mm -hmm. You can make them at home for half the cost. Oh my gosh. Well, I'm very excited. I cannot wait uh, for that to come out. For more you know, nutrition and wellness advice, make sure to check out my website. It's www.bombshellblueprint.com. And of course, pick up Julie's book, Superfood Smoothies, at Williams Sonoma, Barnes & Nobles. You can get it on Amazon. Just go out and get it. So thanks again, Julie. Thanks so much.